insightful podcasts by informative hosts. Insights into Things, a podcast network. Welcome to Insights into Entertainment, a podcast series taking a deeper look into entertainment and media. Your hosts, Joseph and Michelle Whalen, a husband and wife team of pop culture fanatics, are exploring all things from music and movies to television and fandom. Welcome to Insights and Entertainment. This is episode 53, Shrinking Kids growing prices. I'm your host, Joseph Whalen, and my versatile and creative co-host, Michelle Whalen. <laughs> it's always it's always interesting to hear which adjectives you will be. Could you tell I'm running out of adjectives? Uh, can you tell we need to play Mad Libs a little more? <laughs> the green and happy... <laughs> Well, you're purple today. The <laughs> purple and ghostly. That's the what you are. purple and ghostly. There you go. Uh, so today on uh, Disney Detective, we will be talking about some Honey, I Shrunk the Kids reboot news. Um, as, t- as suggested by the title, Disney's raising ticket prices unjustifiably once again, which is a very Disney thing to do. Then we have some touching news of uh, uh, Tinkerbell nature that we'll talk about. Mm -hmm. Then in our newly christened segment, Star Wars Insights, since we've had so much Star Wars news. (laughs) Or until we call it something else. Until we come up with something better, yeah. Um, We have some flashbacks for Samuel L. Jackson and a major Darth Vader bombshell to talk about. And then in our entertainment news, we have some Stranger Things news to talk about. And we get our first look at Robert Pattinson as Batman. I have to say, you know, not to spoil the segment or anything, but he's not bad looking as as Batman. No, not at all. Not at all. Then we will finish up with uh, a couple of off-the-wall, out-in-left-field picks of the week, I think. Yep. Uh, Kind of outside of our normal comfort zone. Mm Mm-hmm. So, shall we get started? Sure. All right. Go for Disney Detective. So this was kind of heartwarming to to hear. Uh, Rick Moranis will be returning after a 24-year acting hiatus to star in uh, Honey, I Shrunk the Kids reboot. Uh, Rick Moranis, obviously, for those who are fans of the original, starred in the 1989 um, classic, Honey, I Shrunk the Kids. And then there oh was... Oh, my God. It was that long ago? Yeah. Wow. <laughs> and then in 92, there was the sequel, Honey, I Blew Up the Kids. And then there was actually a 1997 direct-to-video sequel, Honey, We Shrunk Ourselves. Um, so the reboot is going to take place decades after the first with, uh, Josh Gad starting, starring, sorry, as Wayne's grown up son. Uh, Gad actually had tweeted the news expressing how happy he was to see Moranis back on screen and starring with him. Uh, to quote him, he said, to say it is a dream come true to once again see Rick Moranis on the big screen is an understatement of the decade, but to say... I get an upseat view of him returning to play one of the most iconic roles in the uh, is the understatement of the century. Welcome back, hero. Um, the first movie, obviously, for those that might not have seen it, follows Wayne Zielinski, who's a scientist who accidentally shrinks his kids and the neighbor's kids. And basically the kids are, you know... Uh, going around their backyard, really, and trying to, you know, find their way. That would um, be a cool area to, to do in <laughs> Disney, you know? Mm, they should really do a playground do like that. that. <clears throat> mm. <laughs> so the mo- uh, the new movie is set to recreate the premise where uh, Josh Gad, who is playing Nick Zielinski, accidentally shrinks his own kid, setting up the new story. And you know why they got Josh Gad to play? Because he does everything. Well, no, because Wayne Johnson was already doing something. <laughs> <laughs> so 
So it's either Wayne Johnson's and everything or Josh, Josh Gad's and everything. <laughs> is that what it is? <laughs> yeah, that would have been interesting to see him as, well, he's already doing the, the Jungle Cruise movie. So yeah, he's, exactly. You know, so exactly. he can't do too many, uh, too many um, Disney movies. Um, so this is actually the first on-screen role for Moranis in 24 years after he decided to take a step back following his wife Anne's tragic death. Uh, the actor lost his wife, who was a costume designer, back in February of 1991 to breast cancer, um, and they had two children. So he kind of slowly left public life to focus on being a single father yeah. and just never, you know, he said he never really retired. It just kind of, Yeah, he'd make you an know, appearance here and there yeah, and stuff, but, for but no, overall, no big roles. You know, he said, I took a break, which, you know, turned into a much longer break, but I'm interested in anything that I you know, would find interesting. And I still get the occasional query about a film or a TV role as soon as one comes along that piques my interest. Um, obviously, his return comes months before the new Ghostbusters movie, Afterlife, hits theaters, which was obviously another film franchise that he was part of. Um, but he actually won't be part of that movie. Uh, to quote him from a 2015 interview, uh, he said that I wish them all well, um, I hope it's terrific, but it makes no sense to me why I would do one day of shooting for something I did 30 years ago. Um, while obviously he left to focus on being present for his children, he didn't express regret at his decision. He said, I was working with really interesting people, wonderful people. I went from that to being at home with a couple of little kids, which is a very different lifestyle, but it was very important to me. He added, I absolutely have no regrets whatsoever. My life is wonderful. Um, so it'll be cool to, you know, to, to see him back, you know, on the screen and, and, you know, I remember obviously watching, you know, watching it as a kid, uh, you know, I don't think we've ever shown it to, to our daughter. So it'll be a interesting movie to, to bring back, you it'd know, be, it'd for, probably for be a her. Good, so, uh, a good family movie night thing to see mm -hmm. the original before we go to see this. Yeah. Yeah. So good for him. Glad good. he's, and he's, a, glad he's, he's such a nice actor. Mm -hmm. You know, he's so yeah. gracious. Uh, and, and he's, he's a good actor, you know, mm -hmm. when he plays characters, he, he immerses himself in the mm -hmm. characters that he plays and he doesn't. Yeah. So, which is why he was such a good fit for this role to play this, this dad, this because dad. Yeah. it was a role he had recently taken on in real life mm -hmm. yep. and he really embraced it and, and, you know, did a fantastic job with it. So it should be good to see him do it again. Yep. Uh, what else do we have? Oh, look at that. Disney raising prices again. <laughs> Let's talk about that because we never talk about that. No, this never happens. So Disneyland, not Disney World, Disneyland in California has increased its prices again with tickets now costing up to $209. Wow. So the Disneyland Park in Anaheim has increased the prices of its day passes, annual passes, and digital max passes. Uh, Disneyland had introduced a five-tier pricing scheme that classified tickets, uh, ticket prices as being peak days and off days, while the prices for tickets in low-demand days, such as midweek in March, didn't increase and have remained at $104 per day. Now, tickets for peak days, such as the weekends, increased by $5 from $149 to $154, where mid-tier prices of one-day tickets range from $114 to $139 just for one day. Um, but the most expensive ticket is the one-day hopper, which allows guests to visit both Disneyland and Disney California Adventure. Now, the cost starts at $159 for low-demand days, but goes to 109 on high demand days and those tickets were actually previously 154 and 199 respectively um so a spokesperson for disney uh in a statement said a visit to our parks is the best value in entertainment bar none and we offer flexible choices to enable families to choose what's best for them well, that's so that's that was nice they're doing it all for us, right? They're doing it all for, for us. And it's funny because, you know, we had talked about this and a friend of mine, a, a couple of friends of mine at work had talked about it because they're planning, they're both doing Disney World. Now, I haven't found anything about Disney World prices 
going up yet, but you know it's going to because of it, course. it always does because it's Disney and that and that's what they do. And, you know, in talking about it, you know, we were saying, yeah, OK, you know, how much does and, and we even brought it up, too, because um, I think you had mentioned that there was an article um, that you read that kind of gave the comparison of, OK, well, if you go to a sporting event, right, right. you know, how much do you pay for seats for a sporting event that's only and that's the two thing. or so three they, hours? They, they, <clears throat> uh, they took the assumption that the parks were 15 hour um, events and they said, OK, well, if you're paying a certain amount of money for a concert or right. a sporting event for three hours. Mm -hmm. We're going to take that price and apply it over 15 hours. Right. It's like, well, no, because it doesn't work that way because right. it's, it's a vacation. Right. right. But so. I, I could kind of, you know, I, I could, I could kind of relate. And the other thing too, is that with Disneyland, Disneyland isn't as much of a vacation right. destination but as I go say to, Disney World is. If I go to Disneyland. Right. And a third of the park is shut down for construction. Oh, and I absolutely. Go, hang on. Mm -hmm. And I go to a sporting event and I go watch, you know, we're in the, the Philadelphia area. I go and watch the Eagles game. Half the Eagles game is not going to be shut down for, for construction. I right. can guarantee you that. Right. So I get a full dedicated three mm -hmm. hours of them putting on a show for me, whether it's a sporting event, a musical concert, whatever it is. Right. It, I get their full undivided attention. And I can't say I get that from Disney because Disney's no. constantly got services offline right. because I they're doing definitely, I, I definitely agree with the, if you have so many things shut down because of construction, there should be some sort of, uh, you know, discounted ticket to that. Now, on the day-to-day -day basis... Things happen. Stuff shuts sure. down. I'll, I'll so that's give you that. right because you know I you know back in the day worked in an amusement park, you know in the amusement park industry, you know growing up, and constantly we'd get that complaint, you know, at guest relations. Well, such and such was shut down. I'm like, yeah, well, we had no control over that, and you know the ride was working first thing in the morning, and it I, shut I down. I agree. The my point you is, know, is you're you're comparing apples to oranges here. The oh, other problem absolutely. that I have is that okay. So let's say that, that Magic Kingdom's a 15-hour destination. Mm -hmm. How many of those hours am I standing in line? Well, and that was the thing that we were talking, that we brought up at, at work, was that, okay, so for I'm there at the park for 15 hours, but how many hours am right. I waiting on, on a line? Hey, let's get on Peter Pan, because it's always a 90-minute wait. Right. So I'm waiting an hour and a half mm -hmm. to get on one ride. Right. And then you're going to try to compare this to a sporting event or a concert where I get to my seat and I get to see the whole thing in one sitting. Right. It's you're, you're, you're way off base. Number one with that comparison. And number two, they come up with this, this excuse of, well, we charge more during peak hours so that we can regulate the people in the park right. mm -hmm. when they don't regulate the people in the park. Right. And that was and that was the other thing is, OK, so you're raising your price. OK, so some people might decide not to go because you raised your price. But the other people are still going to go like when we were down in, you know, in, in Disney World for Christmas. That was their peak season. Tickets were $149 for one day. We knew we were only doing one day. And at first, I didn't want to do the park because I didn't want to spend $149 right. for the day. And then you were like, how could we be down in Disney and it's Galaxy's Edge and it's Christmas and ho, ho, ho. We, you know, and what did we do? We spent that much. We for, did. For what? But see, the thing is, if you're going to use that as the logic, then park capacity can't be the same as it right. any other time. Right. Because if you're charging twice the amount of money mm -hmm. to get into the park, then you need to let half the number of people in the park. Right. Instead, and that's right. What they do is they charge twice the amount, but they allow the same number of people to come into the park. <laughs> And it ruins the entire experience for everybody who's in the park. Right. And that's where, and, and we had that same kind of issue with New York Comic Con. They obviously oversold by so many, hey, thanks. Um, 
<laughs> they obviously oversold, you know, the amount of tickets and they didn't have to. They could have said we sell so many thousands of tickets per, you know, per day and that's it. Now, the the thing with with Disney and their park tickets is a lot of times you don't ne- unless you like when we bought our ticket because we were just going for the one day we had to specify what day we were buying our ticket for right but if you have an annual pass if you don't have a block you know a blackout date you can go whatever day you want if you buy a multi-day ticket you know yeah disney's going to know over a certain amount of time how many people are going to go but I, they're not going to know the exact, you know, number. Now, granted, you could not sell day passes, you know, for that day. But, you know, for them to say, oh, we can only let so many people in for per day. But if you already bought your ticket and you already, you know, have an annual pass, then how do you, you well, know, see, and I, I can understand that the logic. So the, I can understand that logic to a certain extent for safety reasons. Right. But when you're going to say and you're going to claim that you're charging more money to deter people from coming and you let still let the same number of right. people in the park, yeah. then you're not deterring. You're It's a money right. grab. That's all right. it is. Because no other day throughout you know the year does Disney close Hit for capacity, capacity right. except for... New Year's Eve, and I can almost you know. guarantee you those that those capacity numbers are fire hazard numbers mm-hmm. that they have in there. Oh, I'm sure. And if Disney could cram more bodies in there and take more money for it, they would. Yeah, yeah. So, anyway, prices going up in Disney because <laughs> you know they need it, right? Uh, so, what's our next uh, our next feel good so, story about so Tinkerbell? Here, no, here here is a really good feel good story, and you know, with with Valentine's Day that just passed and love in the air. Um, so, Margaret Carey, who was the model for Tinkerbell um, and is a Disney fan favorite, um, got married on Valentine's Day to a long lost love. <laughs> Um, so she actually was the reference model for Tinkerbell in 1953's Peter Pan. Um, and she recently reunited with a lost love. And they actually, um, at the time when this article um, came out, they were actually planning on getting married in the spring. But they actually got married on Friday on Valentine's Day. Uh, so for Peter Pan, uh, Carrie was filmed uh, by special effects crews performing different scenes with oversized props to kind of get an idea of how to draw Tinkerbell and, and everything. Right, so right. she actually, you know, she didn't just sit there and, and, you know, look pretty. She actually did a lot of physical work to you know, to bring Tinkerbell, you know, to life. Um, She ended up, you know, working, uh, doing some films later on with Mickey Rooney and uh, Eddie Cantor. Um, She had roles in The Little Rascals and The Andy Griffin Show. Well, back in the 1940s, she and Robert had met. Um, Hey, yay, cheers. (laughs) (laughs) Um, Had met. Um, when he was a student in Southern California at the University of Southern California. Uh, So they dated, but unfortunately, he ended up accepting a job in Northern California, and she stayed behind in Southern California to work on an ABC sitcom. Um, So they kind of lost touch. She ended up marrying um, a television director in 1951, and they were together for 37 years. Um, Then after her first husband passed away, she remarried again, and they were together for 12 years. And, you know, she's been single since then. Well, last year... Robert was in Amsterdam with friends and noticed a store that was called Tinkerbell's Toys. And he commented to his friends that he had been in love with Tinkerbell all his life. And he said, I'd never forgotten her. Well, mutual friends kind of, you know, looked her up online and and found her website and, you know, basically, you know, tried to get the two of them together. And, um, it seems she still had a piece of jewelry that he had given her, 
70 years ago oh, when wow. they were dating. And she said, you know, that, you know, she never forgot him. And they made several phone calls. And finally, they got their schedules together and they met. And she said, as soon as we looked at each other, it's like, you know, love at second sight. It's like the Disney store, a Disney story or a Hallmark movie. Um, he is 94. She is 90. They got married. Um wow. On Valentine's Day, and she's been living out in California all these years, but traveling to different conventions and different Disney things. Well, he lives in Sarasota, Florida, and he just bought a brand new house for the two of them, and she's making her way uh, out to Sarasota to to live wow. with her new husband. So, oh, that's that's a cute story. Yeah, yeah, that's nice. Yeah, it was all over Facebook, you know, this weekend. Various people because they had some sort of uh, Disney Legend event, and that's when she got married. You know, then and they threw her a little party, and you know, See, had pictures of the two of them. You, it's never too late to find true love. Yep. So very happy for them. Oh, nice. All right. That's all for our Disney news. That's it for Disney news. So let's come back with Star Wars Insights. I need to come up with a transition <laughs> yeah, for Star Wars Insights. Yeah, you do. You Insights. do. <laughs> all right. Here we go. Okay. It's about Samuel L. Jackson. So obviously he's very, you know, he's keeping busy. Uh, he's in an uh, upcoming movie with Chris Rock. Um, but fans actually... Uh, found some video on Reddit that captured the moment when the Jedi Master asked George Lucas for a purple lightsaber. And people are absolutely like going gaga over this because it's just like so cute and so simple, but yet, you know, it. Let's, it, let's take a look at it. All right, take a look at it. I'm trying to figure out who we had to talk to about your light color. The lightsaber color. Oh well, good guys are good guys are green and blue. Bad guys are red. That's just the way it works. No purple left. You, you might get purple. <laughs> um. So if you you know if you couldn't hear it, he he said you know Samuel L. Jackson said you know who do we got to talk to about lightsaber and. You know, George says, well, the good guys get green and blue and the bad guys are red. That's just the way it works. And he kind of is like, so no purple? <laughs> he goes, yeah, we'll, we'll see what we can do. You know, <laughs> so it's like, okay, that's cool. Yeah, you know, that, that, that's pretty fun. Yeah, so that, that was a nice little, you know, so now, now I feel, you know, because I, when we made our lightsabers, I had picked... A purple lightsaber, so now I know. So you feel very Samuel L. Jackson like. I now. do, I do. I'm gonna Good go snakes on a plane and nice. other various various. Well, the things. other interesting thing in in uh, with his lightsaber was the when the prop masters right. made the lightsaber, mm -hmm. they had engraved something on the uh, pommel, the bottom of the lightsaber, right? That was a reference to one of his other movies. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> um, which we can't really say. <laughs> um, you can go look it up and find it. <laughs> but it was uh, Pulp Fiction, a Pulp Fiction Right, reference. right. And if it's Pulp Fiction, we definitely can, yeah, can't yeah, talk can't about say it. it. But, but it was just, it was <clears throat> kind of funny. You know, all the stories sort of came out around the time that uh, I think it was Attack of the Clones came out because he didn't really, he didn't wield a lightsaber in Phantom Menace. He right. didn't get his lightsaber until... Uh, get to use his lightsaber until attack of the clones mm -hmm. so all the stories sort of emerged around that time right right it, it was just neat the, the 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 flavor that he gave to the set right. everyone talked about that yeah the intensity that that he always brought to the set so yeah everyone sort of paid tribute to him like you know paid homage to him on the set right right so that was always nice. yeah so that was a, a cute little clip that that surfaced so so, what is our Darth Vader bombshell? So, obviously, there's no new Star Wars movie coming out for a while. So, you know, everybody's kind of looking for, for new things. Some people aren't, obviously. Well, there's a new comic book series from writer uh, Greg Park and artist Raphael Inino Inso. I always screw up 
last name. So, um, and it, it basically follows Darth Vader immediately after the events of The Empire Strikes Back and showing how he had coped with Luke's refusal to join the dark side. Hey, spoiler, not very well as it turns out. So he embarks on a mission um, of revenge to track down basically everybody who hid the boy from him um, and everybody who made him weak and basically destroy them. Uh, So Darth Vader probably didn't expect to come face to face with an unexpected ghost from his past life as Anakin Skywalker, But it's just what happens at the end of the first issue of Star Wars Darth Vader. The series teams Darth Vader with a talkative data droid Z67, and Vader's revenge mission takes him to Tatooine, revisiting his hometown. Um, And he starts having flashbacks of the time that he spent with Amidala. Uh, Padme Amidala. So one crucial fa- uh, flashback comes from Revenge of the Sith when Padme rejects him on Mustafar, and it echoes what he just experienced again with Luke on Cloud City, and we see him imagining her uh, in a place of Luke falling down the shaft. Um, but there's no one on Tatooine to punish because he basically already got rid of them. Um but Z67 discovers a security system um, and shows traces of where Luke had been taken after Padme's death. However, the droid discovers that the recordings for after her death are missing. Um, But that tells us something um, that someone wanted to hide something. Perhaps she did return or perhaps someone else came after her death. Uh, Z67 adds, before finding a transmitter to track down who the security uh, device is reporting to. And that takes Darth Vader to another area, and after his killing his way through everything, he comes face-to-face with Padme Amidala. Dun-dun-dun. So, is she dead? Is she not? We saw her funeral and her death after, you know, she gave birth to the twins. Um, but, you know, basically, you know, the cover of the issue shows, you know, that Amidal, that Padme plays a significant role, or is it someone that looks like her? Could it be her handmaiden who was a decoy when the whole thing was, was going back and forth in, in the original, uh, trilogies or the, the prequels, I'm sorry. Um, so the you know the story kind of goes to to say you know you're there's there hasn't been confirmation if it is padme did she you know fake her own death or was it really um the handmaiden or is vader just hallucinating going crazy he's a crazy man (laughs) he's a crazy old man and you know seeing his wife so you know it's something obviously as the story goes on there'll be more about it but kind of a interesting little twist to well and you know given what they've done with some of the other things you know bringing back darth maul giving him spider legs and bringing back palpatine now everyone's coming back everybody apparently you can't die in star wars anymore (laughs) you don't really die (laughs) so it would not surprise me that that she's alive and, and, you know, the funeral that you see in Revenge of the Sith very well could have been her A decoy. decoy. Right, right. Yeah. So, Which makes you think, was Anakin actually with the decoy or was he with Padme? It gets really complicated when right, you get to Right, right. Who's Darth Vader? Because you don't, you know, yeah. you never know who's under, you know, everything. Exactly. Maybe Anakin really died and... This was one of Palpatine's. Yeah, because you know he was played things. by someone completely different in <laughs> Return of the Jedi than he was in Revenge of the Sith. So, right. look nothing like him. Right, right. <laughs> so you never know. You never know. You never know. So that's it for Star Wars insights. Mm-hmm. We will come back with our entertainment news of the week. All right. Tell us about some Stranger Things news. So the teaser trailer dropped for season four of Stranger Things. And basically it confirms what everybody was, you know, kind of rumored about is that Hopper is alive. And of course you have no idea. All that means is the toilet's (laughs) unclogged to me. 
Uh, so the the teaser trailer, which was entitled From Russia with Love, uh, reveals a brand new setting for the series, a snow covered landscape of Russia. Um, and we kind of in the, the last couple of episodes of uh, season three, we we saw that that was kind of where they were going with it um, because you knew the Russians were the bad guy. Um, and the last, the Russians are always the bad guys on American television. Well, in 1980s. Yeah. You know, and so the, the scene, the, the series ended and you could see that they were back in Russia, um, you know, and that there was somebody that was in a prison cell, but you had no idea who it was. They didn't, you know, mention anything. So, you know, as you can see the the trailer behind us, you know, there's a chain gang and, you know, Working on the chain gang. Yeah, you know, you need it with a Russian accent. Oh. oh. I don't sorry, know Victor. Yes. So, sorry, Victor. You're on chain gang duty. <laughs> Someday we'll have to tell that story. Um, but anyway, at the end of the scene, it does a close up and it's it's Hopper, um, where in the uh, final scenes of last season, they're dealing with this um, nuclear reactor vessel. thing. No, 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 nuclear vessel. That's Star Trek. <laughs> That's Star Trek work. And, you know, the whole thing blows up and you figure that he's dead and that he got blown up. But obviously something sucked him from that universe to someplace else or whatever. So... You know. Does he have a goatee so you can tell he's the alternate universe? Uh, no, because he his hair was all shaved because he used to uh -huh. have a goatee and he didn't look like he had it. it looked like he shaved. So because that used to always kinda. be the telltale sign of the alternate universe <laughs> is if you had a goatee. <laughs> that another, is true. Another Star Trek. Reference. So a, yeah, so a premiere date hasn't been revealed yet, but probably looking at either later this year or early next year for that. So okay, interesting. So tell us about. The Batman. So now we're finally getting a first look at Robert Pattinson's Batman. Um, it was a very uh, 55. It was a, another teaser trailer. Uh, it was a 55 second trailer where really it kind of it wasn't until like the last 10 seconds of it that you really could see anything because it was just, you know, a dark fade getting a little bit lighter and then all of a sudden you see him you know coming forward and and there he is you know as as the batman and and kind of um not uh you know still looking like you know a, a guy in his 30s or 20s right. like he didn't have that I've been Batman forever kind of look that's a different series right it was you know I'm a younger version you know and and kind of cool like not a full his face looks chiseled like his features are so <laughs> pronounced right but that wasn't really this was a, a mock-up these pictures these weren't you know but when you when you watch the video again you know it takes a it's a 55 second video takes a while to get to where you actually right, right. you know see him a little bit of a mask you know not the whole cowl and everything so kind of like you know i'm not you know, the teenager from Gotham, I've kind of moved up, right. you know, but still kind of, kind of gritty. So no pimples on this Batman No <laughs> pimples on this Batman. Okay. Well, and that was all for entertainment news. Yep. How exciting. Short and sweet. We will come back with, well, we, we, we got all this other stuff yeah. to talk about. <laughs> uh, we'll come back with our insightful picks of the week. Uh, yeah, go, for, <laughs> go for your pick of the week. Uh, so my pick of the week, uh, was we had a, um, a pre Valentine's day date because it's really crowded to go out on, on Valentine's day. Oh, and it was a, a Friday night. Um, so we picked an activity uh, that I figured I would do as my insightful pick, which is something that this was your first official time doing, and this was my third time doing, and that is axe throwing. Nothing says loving like <laughs> axe throwing. I ain't going to bring Constance with you either. No, I left her downstairs. Oh, man, I should have brought her upstairs. Yeah, that was really kind of funny, too, because I brought my little stuffed... Uh, 
stuffed character of Constance, who is the bride from the Haunted Mansion, who walks around with an axe. So that was kind of... Which she's used to kill all of her husbands. Right. That's kind of the important part of that moral of the story. Right. So So tell us about (laughs) axe throwing. So axe throwing is a a craze that's kind of picked up. Um, In most cases, it's really started from the Ren Fairs. Um, any, Any Ren Fair you go to throughout, you know, the country has axe throwing or knife throwing or, or something kind of along the lines of that. And over the last couple of years, it's kind of grown as a um, activity for, you know, get togethers for friends, team building with work. Uh, they actually have an axe throwing league. A um, lot different than a bowling league. Um, there's usually alcohol included, which that kind of scares me <laughs> that, yeah, that people well. would go in and throw axes. Um, within our area, there's actually two companies that are uh, around. One of them uh, who we went to on on Wednesday is uh, Primitive Axe. They only have two locations within South Jersey. They have a Glassboro location and a Blackwood location. Um, but the other... Um, company is Bury the Hatchet, and they actually have 17 locations nationwide, um, mostly on the East Coast. They have a couple uh, in in New York. They have a bunch in North Jersey, Central Jersey, South Jersey. They even have a location in Florida and Kansas. So it's kind of spread spread all out, and I'm sure there's other companies out there. These just happen to be, you know, the two that that I've used, right. you know, before. Throw, um, throw a lot of axes there. <laughs> I have. <laughs> it, it's a good stress reliever, you know, and actually it is a cardio workout. Even though the axe itself isn't very heavy, the constant throwing, going and picking it up and everything, you, you do get, get a little workout. You know, we were both a little sore. Yes, I, I'm sure Lizzie Borden would definitely attest to how much <laughs> exercise you get Oh my axes. God, that would be awesome to do one with Lizzie Borden. Mm-hmm. Like, And she's like, you can get your picture taken with Lizzie Borden. Like Lizzie's axe throwing. <laughs> Lizzie's axe throwing. Awesome! I love it. Um, roughly, it, you know, it, it costs about, you know, both tend to, to range from the $40 for two hours. Um, unfortunately, the more people you have that go and play, the price is still the same. Um, so, you know, our suggestion would be obviously to, to try and do a smaller group because then you get more time actually throwing the axes for the amount of money. Um, you know, we went, we ended up having a, a Groupon offer that was a two for one. Um, so it was $40 for the two of us for, for two hours. And that was probably more time than, than the two of us actually. Oh, I was you know, thoroughly exhausted when we got done. Yeah, yeah. So we probably could do, you know, most places do, um, do like a half hour increment or an hour or two hour for, you know, the lane. Um, and it's fun to just go with friends. Uh, both places allow you to bring food. They're BYOB. Um, and it's just like a fun, you know, activity. Definitely gets your, your stress out. Uh, one of the things at Primitive Acts that I saw on their website is they actually have, I can't remember what the name of it was called, but if you didn't want to just throw axes and you wanted to actually, like, break stuff that they actually had like a special cage and I guess like um, a, a sledgehammer and goggles where you could actually let out your frustration in the destructive zone, I think is what they called it. Interesting. Um, so, <laughs> yeah. So kind of cool. But again, it was a whole was, new form of therapy. It was a whole new thing. You know, we, you know, we thought about, oh, maybe we'll do this every couple of months just as a fun little you know activity to to get out of the house you know and do so you know we'll we'll see i've like i said i've done it before with girlfriends of mine um you know we were talking about at work a lot of you know you can do it as a team building uh the one time we saw a bachelor party and a bachelorette party was there um you know when we went it was a very slow night it was just the two of us there so that was kind of cool because you know, we had the lane just to ourselves. We didn't have to share. No um, witnesses. No witnesses. <laughs> the bodies were buried in the back, but it's okay. So. All right. Cool. Nice pick. Thank you. Nice pick.
So my pick this week is actually a merchant that I have recently done business with and was very pleased with. It is Darman's Props from uh, his Etsy shop. Uh, Darman's uh, Props is a merchant shop on Etsy specializing in screen-accurate leather work. Based in Jacksonville, Florida, they've been selling on Etsy since 2016. With over 3,000 sales yielding over 1,000 reviews, they currently hold a five-star rating from their customers. When I started putting my Star Wars-themed costume together, I came across some of their work uh, for a few specialized pieces of the costume. I wound up making two separate purchases from them, the first of which was a neck seal, um, piece that was meticulously made by hand specifically to my custom measurements mm -hmm. um, satisfied not only with the quality of the work but also the reasonable price and the delivery time uh, they were my first choice when i needed to uh, come up with a few finishing pieces so i sourced two accurate uh, screen accurate leather belt pouches from darman's as well uh, with an event coming up zolocon as a matter of fact which mm -hmm. we'll talk about shortly um, I had planned on having the costume, um, for the show. So I reached out after I made the purchase and asked whether or not I'd have the, the pouches in time. Bobby Stout, who's the shop owner responded to my question almost immediately when he found out I needed the items and realized I wouldn't get them in time based on his regular production schedule. He rushed to get the handmade items finished ahead of time and overnighted to the, them to me at no extra charge so I'd have them in time for the convention. That was really cool. Um, I was totally blown away uh, by the level of customer service that he, he offered me <clears throat> um, and uh, the quality of, of the items. Um, he offers a, a wide selection of uh, screen-accurate items that are all handmade uh, from belt buckles to belts to holsters to pouches um you know he does fantastic work they're all for the most part sci-fi themed a lot of star wars star trek themed items on there um i was already a satisfied repeat customer uh, based strictly on the quality of the work and the price because all of his prices are very reasonable uh, but after experiencing the outstanding dedication to customer service, uh, he's made me a, a lifetime customer. And I, I thought his handiwork and his uh, customer service dedication should uh, should be showcased a little bit. So Very cool. Darman's Props on Etsy, www.etsy.com slash shop slash Darman's Props, D-A-R-M-A-N-S props all one word and that was it for my picks very good pick we'll be back with some afterthoughts so recap of zolocon <laughs> i'm gonna miss that we won't be talking about that until next february yeah <laughs> So you want to just cut to the video? Sure, let's watch right. the video let and then see, we can. Let me see. Oh wait, it's pulling up on the wrong screen. Hang on, hang on, hang on. Wrong Funky screen. music. Wait, do, let's, do, let's do, go do, here, do, 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 and then I can move over here, do that, and then and I then can do, do this, this, and a little bit of that, and a little bit of magic, and then we can do a little rewind, and now we can do it.
So that was Zolocon. Oh, yes, that. it I was. was. Play again. Stop <laughs> that. Okay. So that was Zolocon. Mm-hmm. So that was held at the Fuge, which is, uh, if I should, I can throw this up real quick. So that is a scale model that's down in the lobby of the Fuge. Uh, and that is basically the main room that the um, convention's held in. Mm hmm. And the centrifuge arm and capsule and everything, everything is still, still there. there. Yeah, if you, you go back and you watch the, the video, you can see. Um, and what is kind of neat is that you can, you know, walk upstairs. They have a, a couple of different ways to get upstairs. And one of them, when you walk, you can actually, and that's one of the pictures that you, you, that you saw, was inside the capsule. You can actually look and right. see, you know, the, um, the inside of it and... and <laughs> not a whole lot of room, um, you know, and then, you know, so here it is. So here's where you can, you know, see there's there's a little seat that, you know, the astronaut or flight, uh, you know. The, the test, the flight test dummy. <laughs> <Right? home. laughs> Had to sit in. Um, and then what's kind of neat is you go, you know, into the room and it's the control panels. It's all the, you know, original you know, control panels uh, are, are still there. And, and so that's kind of, you know, the, one of the aspects that, that's just kind of cool because, you know, you don't expect, oh, I'm going to go to a toy show and see, you know, all of this history, Yeah, you know, that's and, there. And the other thing that's, that's <clears throat> really neat is as you're walking around, there's pieces from the test facility mm-hmm. that are on display around the right, whole thing. Right. And some of them have plaques describing what right, they are right. and stuff. So it's like a little museum trip, yeah. you know, as well. Yeah. So so really kind of cool. Again, one of our, our favorite locations for us, it's about an hour away. Um, you know, it's funny. You kind of drive, you know, on the highway and then you take some back roads and then you're driving. You're like, where the heck am I? Yeah. And you come up and here's this, you know, Navy testing, you know, facility just kind of in the back of, of no place else. Yep. Um, it did seem like there were a few less vendors there this year. Um, attendance didn't seem as, it didn't seem as crowded this right. year. It was steady, um, but not crowded. Right. Like, like past years that we've gone, it's been elbow to elbow in there. Right. So we were trying to figure out, you know, cause it wasn't really weather related. It was a decent day for February. Yeah. There wasn't, we didn't well, know of was, anything it else. It was two days this year, which was probably it. Right. So previously it was a single day. So you're probably getting your whole crowd one day. True. You're spreading your crowd out over two days this time, and that's True. probably yeah. Probably that was probably why, why you know um, they have a little food vendor there, so you can get you know some snacks. You know, no major food while you're while you're walking around and stuff. Um, you know, some of the vendors, um, you know, we only see at this location because right. of it being out in you know in the middle of nowhere. In the middle of nowhere, um, some you know we've seen in other places. Uh, uh, a friend of ours has a friend who. Uh, has been doing the uh, toy show route. So he was there. This was like the second time that we've seen him uh, at a different, you know, venue and all types of things. So you got a couple of people selling comic books, a sell, you know, a bunch of people selling, you know, brand new toys, Uh, obviously tons of people with, with pops, uh, the vinyl pops and stuff, and then a lot of people with their you know own creations. So you it's a lot a, of yeah, you have a lot of artists there. Mm-hmm. Uh, you had some cosplayers there. Right. You had some classic toys there. You had some new toys there. So um, a nice range. It's not just you know one type of, of yeah. Thing. And if you're a comic book person, they had comic book vendors mm-hmm. there as well. So yeah, so a little bit of everything, you know, for for everyone. You know, our daughter does. You know, she's not into little pet shops like she used to be. Right. Uh, now she's doing uh, Legos, and they had yep. you know people selling Lego kits and then loose Legos, and that's kind of what she's into now is the loose Legos because she's in that creative yeah. mindset of of doing that. Um, there were a bunch of Baby Yoda things, uh, stickers, T-shirts. I ended up picking up. I meant to bring Baby Yoda from downstairs, upstairs. Um, somebody um, had crafted uh, at a clay, um, right. and he had Baby Yoda, and it's and he has the frog in his mouth. <laughs> it's just right. adorable. Uh, so you know, so I picked up that and a couple of other 
uh, you know, little things, um, you know, so we, we all came home with something, something yep. cool. And, and you got, I ended up getting you for Valentine's Day, a um, interesting version of Darth Vader um, that we'll have to. It's here. Oh, he is? I didn't even realize he was here. <gasps> He's here, but I don't have him on camera. Hang on. Oh, okay. I'll I'll keep talking, and we can, you know, so we can, yeah. So this was something we've seen this before, this type of artwork, but I never bought one, and one of the vendors had it, and it was a a decent price, and I went, okay, I'll I'll buy you for my Darth Vader for Valentine's Day, and and ooh, let me hold him up. Trying not to cut myself. Yeah, it's so. a. It's a really cool uh, mechanicalized version of, of Darth Vader, all metal. Yeah. Um, and, and it's just it's just the artwork, you know, the the talent it takes to build something like that, the time it takes is just incredible. Yeah. So that was to my Darth Vader, you know, for Valentine's Day. So nice. So Zolocon twenty twenty had a good time. Yeah, sure did. So what else are we plugging here? Uh, so within the next couple of weeks, uh, Monster Mania 45 will be uh, March 13th through 15th in Cherry Hill at the Crown Plaza uh, in uh, on Marlton Pike. That's one that we go to, you know, every couple of years we, we go. They, they do it uh, in the Cherry Hill area, usually in March and then again in August. Yeah. Um, various different celebrities. Uh, if you go to monstermania.net, it'll tell you, you know, all about it with the different prices and everything. Um, and one thing that we uh, forgot to mention, uh, the end of March is uh, one of the locations in Delaware. Delaware that we like to hit um, that they do a toy show on Saturday. Uh, I'm sorry, a train show on Saturday and a toy show on Sunday. And that's the, the Delaware train show uh, will be on Saturday, March 28th from nine to two at the near shrine center um, on DuPont highway in Newcastle. Admission is $5 and then on Sunday is the April Fool's um, comic uh, toy show. And that one uh, is also $5. Uh, children under 12 are free. $10 for early buyers uh, with an 8 a.m. admission. And then $5 if you come uh, after the fact. So that's one that we like to hit as well. Um, more so kind of flea markety, I guess. You yeah, don't really find yeah. that many th new toys. It's it's usually old, you know, used toys uh, in most cases, but usually a, a decent variety. Um, you know, and there have been times when we've gone and you know we haven't really gotten anything but you know it's it's not too far for us it's maybe about a half an hour there's also a, a farmer's market up the road that sometimes will but the dealers at the toy <coughs> show are always willing to deal to you so you can yes. get a good price yeah you can always bargain um you know and you know some of the people and usually with them it's usually the same same vendors uh throughout the you know it's the same guy so you know again you know good deals to to be had uh, so then after March is done, then we move into April and then we have the great Philadelphia comic con in the, uh, at the greater Philadelphia expo center in Oaks, then the darksome arts and craft, which will be in Philadelphia on April 19th. Then we got June with pop mania con one, which is the sister to monster mania. Right. That'll be, Pop culture, not just horror stuff. Um, and then obviously Keystone Comic Con will be the end of August. And then rounding out the end of September, we got Retro Con. Retro Con. 2020. <laughs> All right. That's, uh, that's a lot of conventions coming up. And mm -hmm. uh, I'm sure somewhere in there is uh, Wizard World that we probably won't be going to again. Right. But we probably should. Should. At least. We'll plug it. We'll plug it just because. We'll, we'll see what the prices are, see if they price themselves out again. <laughs> 
probably. Yeah. <laughs> but hey, if you go to Disney, it's probably only like fifty dollars more or twenty dollars yeah. more for Disney. So. <laughs> See, there you go. That's where Disney. That's Never true. mind. Yeah. <laughs> I'll be quiet. <laughs> so I think that's all we have for today. I think that is it. I think we are done. Our contact info. Oh, that too. Yeah. Just in so, case, just in case you wanted to contact us. So you can email us at comments at insightsintothings.com. Or on Twitter at insights underscore things. Our videos are available on youtube.com slash insights into things. On the web at www.insightsintothings.com. The audio version of our podcast are available at podcast.insightsintoentertainment.com. And on Facebook, we are facebook.com backslash insights into things podcast. Oh, and one afterthought here, one programming note. Uh, I thought I had resolved the issue with the video subscriptions on the podcast. I did not. We are continuing to post them to our YouTube channel, but I'm in the process of trying to set up a new hosting provider for our video podcast. So I hope to have that available for us by this time next week. So that's it. Okay. Another one in the books. Have a good week, everyone. Bye.